Hey guys, Henning and Morton here. And in today's video, we are going to show you some of the super cool top tips for UVing in Maya 2018 and above, I guess. Mm. So I, I don't actually know which version this was. It's 2017 at some point. Autodesk acquired Nightshade. And Nightshade is a super powerful UV editor um, that has now been integrated fully into Maya. They made some tweaks to it as well, yeah. and it's actually super, super tight now. UV mapping in Maya used to be terrible. So if you if you're from, from the old school where, who who uses something like UV layout, mm. like uh, yeah, like UV layout for that and uh, refuses to use Maya for it, like <laughs> Maya has improved a lot. We understand, yeah. but it's actually improved over last year significantly. I pretty much only use Maya for all my UV mapping needs now. Mm, me too. I used to use ZBrush a lot, actually. Mm, yeah. So, what you can do to help speed it up is if you go under Workspaces and set it to UV Editing, that mm. just gives you, it like docks the UV Editor over here to the right, and you can close all the stuff that you don't need. Mm. So, the first thing we're going to take a look at is straightening UVs. Um, like, old school way of straightening UVs would be like you select your edges and you unitize it, and yeah. then you stitch it together. But that's a terrible way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. So with uh, Nightshade or the new UV toolkit, you can do it pretty easily. So come in and select some edges. And if you go under Unfold and you hit Straighten Shell, it'll straighten out your UVs. We're still not there. So if you go into UV mode, select all your UV points as they straighten UVs. You might have to play around with the um, with the ratio here, with mm. the, the angles. So I just set it to 45. I think it's 30 by default. Straighten the UVs and they're straightened out. Then you can unfold along which either axis you're, you're working on to just get the more correct spacing yeah. and then you can straighten it again. And then you have perfectly straight UVs where you can just easily tile the texture across and look Amazing. Super nice little tip. Like this is something we've been talking about before in some of the videos that texturing really starts when it comes to UV mapping. Like if you if you have bad UVs, even though they're they're perfectly unfolded, mm. like there's no stretching on them, uh, you will fight them throughout. Like yeah. if, if you're texturing something like this and you have it straight, you are so much better off and your texture will be twice as fast. Yeah. So following up from that, we can see that we've lost a bit of size in our yeah. little collar here. And before this, companies would write their own tools. I used to use a software called UV Deluxe in order to match these sizes. And there are some Python scripts out there as well yeah. that can do it. The problem with Python is that it gets really slow. Yeah. So I think they've done some improvements here for, for the old new nightshade thing. So if you want to match the size or the texel density of this thing to this thing, what you can do is you can just select an entire shell or you can just select parts of it if you want. But I'm going to select this entire shell. We go to transform and we hit get texel density. And now it gives us a number. So what you could do in your project is you could, for example, have like a scale cube. Mm. And that scale cube could be set to 1 or 10 or 5 or whatever, or random number 1.37. And then you can just input that number here, select everything. Let's say we actually want to match that to all our UVs. And we just set that. And that sets the rest of our UVs to be the correct size. So now we know if we tile something across, it's going to be exactly the same size on yeah. all of our shells. It's really important that the texture density is the same across all of them. Like otherwise, if you, when, when you're texturing, you will be using a lot of tiles, like Morton is saying here. Like you'll be using them a lot, way more yeah. than you think. <laughs> so uh, that's that's essentially my job as a texture artist: use tiles. So if they are not spaced the same, you're going to have to create different tile nodes and mask them out, and all hell breaks loose. So definitely keep the text and density same across yeah, all objects. And then you have objects. different sizes, and it yeah. just becomes a nightmare. This really just ensures that you can work with one tile node, for example, yeah. for your all of it. Yeah. And the next is a cool addition, I think. I, I feel like it's been there for a little bit, maybe. Yeah, it has. It's, uh, it's the cut and the, the sew tool. That sew tool. These not are super sew. cool. So by default, if we just hit our cut tool, I actually really like this tool. Um, mm. You can sort of dynamically draw where you want your seams to be. The issue that you run into is this. So now we've actually deformed our UVs. Yeah. So if you just shift and click uh, whatever tool you're using, um, it'll pop up here. So you don't need to go up to tools and cut and go into the options. Yeah. Here you just want to lower the cut open ratio to zero. And then if you do it again, you can see we have seams now, but yeah. they're not actually being separated. 
So the pr- the reason this is a problem is because it's actually deforming the UVs. Like yeah. right now, and you, if you were to move the shell around, this would th- the spacing would be the same. The UVs would be exactly the same. But if it, it looks cooler when it <laughs> when it separates them out, but it, you will actually get stretching around those areas, it's and not you very have practical. no, and you have to unfold that stuff again and just just kill that thing right mm. away. It's one of these looks cool. Terrible feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, for demonstration purposes, I have reset the tool, so mm-hmm. it will actually split this apart again. Yeah. Um, but that is so we can show off the next tool, which is the sew tool. Crazy. Okay, let's do some crazy. This is here. such a cool tool, though. So with the sew tool, uh, you get oh, that sew tool. You get a little <laughs> radius, and you can see everything that's within the radius mm. is going to get sewn together. Really nice. And you can, if you hold down B and you just drag to the side. You'll get a radius, so maybe you have cuts up there that you don't want to affect, and you can just go mm-hmm. in with a very small brush size, super cool, or stuff. a very large one, and quickly uh, merge it all together. Before this, you would have to just select all the um, select all the edges and just uh, sew it together. This is this is just a lot handier. Yeah. It's, it's not that it's not that it replaces the old tool. It's just that it, you you just have more options for certain things. This is better for certain things. Other things are better, but it's just cool to have variation. Yeah, well, this is what you would do before what Morgan's mm. showing you now, which is which is also a good way of doing it. It's just a lot cooler to have it on a brush. Yeah, and the <laughs> thing is, the more complex your your UVs your cuts are, the yeah. harder this becomes. So yeah. this just really speeds up your workflow. Yeah. And for our very last tip of the day, we're gonna look at the auto seams feature. That's such a cool so feature. Let's just just gonna apply a planar map to this entire thing. Mm-hmm. With the, Beautiful UVs here, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, this is uh, akin to uh, UV Master, kind of the UV Master thing you have in ZBrush, where it'll it'll find the most optimal place to to have a seam, yeah. and then create that seam for you. So it's again under cut and sew. If we just hit Shift and click it, for some reason this doesn't get docked. Yeah. Um, what you can do, which is really cool, you can set it to select instead of cut, so yeah. it'll give you a suggestion of where your cut should be without actually cutting. There's also a setting there for fixed non-manifold geometry. So uh, th- that is non-manifold geometry is something you should never have a new model. Mm. Uh, if you really don't want to fix stuff in the UV stage, yeah. then you're just in trouble. So fix your non-manifold geometry before you're doing UVs. Yeah, it's actually an interesting option to have there because it, yeah. it's... Or maybe it's like to remind you <laughs> you should really not Yeah, or like maybe if you're working on a scan or something like that. But mm. but by fixing non-manifold geometry, you are actually changing the model, yeah. like in a quite a drastic way. Yeah. So uh, make sure your model is clean before you do any <laughs> UVs. <laughs> but yeah, let's just test this out. These, so these are let's just reset. These are the default settings. Yeah. Hit apply. And now it's been cut. So what we can do is just select that. And we unfold it. And ta-da! And now we have some. Oh, now we have some pretty nice UVs. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not super nice, but it's all automatic. It was one click. Yeah. So you know, for background characters, or rocks or trees or whatever, yeah. this is a perfect solution. Yeah. And I mean, you can always come in with the unfold tool and like the brush. Try to brush it out a little bit, optimize it. So, so, so this is what we mean by the fact that UV tools in Maya have actually got really good. Yeah. Like this is something you couldn't really do a few years ago. Hell, even the unfold tool was broken like like <laughs> nothing else. Like you literally couldn't unfold. This is why we use ZBrush for that. Mm. I don't use ZBrush for UV mapping anymore. Maybe if it's like a super quick thing, I just have to get out. But in general, Maya has become a very mature UV tool over just over the last like, two, three years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ever since they started improving it, so I, I don't know if they improved it a little bit and then implemented Nightshade or what they did, mm. but with the with the implementation of Nightshade, it's just gone from being an okay UV tool to an absolute amazing UV yeah. tool. Yeah. And like Henning says, the sort of UV master solution before was, was also okay, yeah. but the problem is you have the import export thing yeah. and then you got to transfer your UVs. You and have to own ZBrush. Oh yeah, you also have to own ZBrush. <laughs> you have to have a whole separate software. So today, I, when we've been working on film, uh, we've been using all the UVs in Maya. Like, yeah. like we said, some people still prefer to use UV layout, yeah. but that has the worst interface of any tool in the history. And if you don't use it every single day, it's it's kind of pointless. Like you can do most of, actually you can do all the UV mapping in Maya perfectly fine today. Yeah, UV, UV layout was something that I just couldn't get into. No. It was just too ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but it just, it looks like a tool that was designed in the end of the 90s, which it probably was. Yeah, in the 1890s. Yeah, and then they just didn't touch it again. But it, like, it's an amazingly powerful tool. Yeah. But most of the features, I feel like, are represented within Maya now. Yeah, if you have Maya, stick to Maya. Mm. 
So with all that said, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Mm. And if you want to see more exciting UV <laughs> content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We are ready with the sexy UV content, guys. <laughs> no worries here. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks, guys.